Hello, I'm Edwin, and you're watching Edwin Travels Too. And today I'm in Chirico Summit, and we're at the General Patton Memorial Museum. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and tour the museum, tour the tank yard, and see what's here. Um, so stay tuned. Hope you enjoy what we're about to show you. Here's the inside of the museum. So here's a little quick tour of the tank yard. Um, there's the Pershing tanks, the M47 and the M48 tanks. And then here's some other tanks that are more used for utility purposes. Here's a wrecker truck, a water truck. This is a Russian firefighting tank. Here's a Humvee, and here is a truck that was believed to be used in World War I. Here's an amphibious vehicle that's uh, affectionately known as the Duck. Um, it can go on water and it can also go on land. Some uh, tour companies use this thing now. 
Um, I know in San Diego they got a little tour company they could do. Let's see if we could see inside here. And that's what the inside of the duck looks like. And there's seating. It's mostly used for carrying passengers and cargo. Here's a chapel that when this place was being used as a tank training center, um, it was a chapel that they used one of a uh, couple they had on the grounds. This was our main tank. It was a medium tank. It was the M4 Sherman. This tank was actually signed off for by Patton himself. He approved this tank. Sherman, the Sherman tank has a 75 millimeter gun as opposed to the 37. Still smaller than the German 88, but more effective. It had about seven inches of armor in the front and had a crew of five. The driver, assistant driver, the gunner and loader, and then the commander. As I said, always sit to the top. These things are what we mainly used. They were very quick. And everyone else, the main thing they also had was they had powered turrets. The turret was electric. You moved a little handle and it would rotate. It made it very fast. Everyone else had to move a crank to turn their turret. They were very quick for a tank of its size and its class, but not too quick. A light tank would still outrun it. As good as the tanks were though, still wasn't a match for the Germans who had more armor, bigger guns. It took about five Shermans to take on one Tiger tank. And of those five, four would be destroyed. About that, we came up with the design for our next tank, our Pershing tank over here. How they fought, how they performed, how the Germans handled their tanks. So we designed this off of there, off of those ideas and those things we learned. It has much more armor, has about 10 inches of armor in the front, as opposed to the Sherman 7. This only has a crew of 4, as opposed to a crew of 5, even though it's bigger, because that's all armor. It's all armor. This thing has a 90mm gun. Bigger than the Germans, who had an 88 went from five Shermans to one Tiger, to one Pershing to one Tiger. Now these were designed towards the end of the war. So for the Shermans, we made about 56,000 for the whole war. And uh, those two tanks I actually showed you were actually tanks built throughout the time. We don't think they were used in, in uh, battles. We think they were used for training, but they were still used in the time. The Sherman was a target tank, so I had a hole on it. We used it in target range use. This Pershing tank here was actually used in combat. It's very rare that we have this because we only made about 2,000 of them. And ones that actually came out in time for World War II was in the hundreds. This one was used in the war. Used in the two impacts on the front. <coughs> Now they looked at the angle it came in, how much damage it did, stuff like that. Stuff way above my head. And they figured out what, what shot at. They believed uh, it was a German light tank from World War I. Towards the end of the war, the Germans were, they were taking anything they had. Anything. So they believed it was an old World War I tank from the Germans called a Hessian light tank. It was only two men how much it did to it. Basically, it was two mosquito bites. These two here are our complete M60A1s. They are both running. They are two of our running tanks. The M60 was used in Vietnam. I'm not sure about Korea, but I know definitely Vietnam. These, two, these things on the side, it has one on each side, which are grenade launchers. 
probably could put an actual grenade in there, but mainly they were used for smoke grenades. You could shoot a smoke grenade, conceal yourself, and re reposition, that sort of thing. The big box on the front is a spotlight. I guess it could be used just for uh, seeing and looking around, but it's got headlights on the front. They want that. Spotlight, that can blind someone at a mile away. Mainly what you would use it is you would shine the spotlight, they would get blinded, and what are you going to do when you get blind? You want to stop them. So they turn and they shoot at the light. You're a mile away, so they ain't going to hit you. So now they've given their position away, and you get to laugh as you pull in an airstrike on them. This is our big MCC tank. Uh, those are about the main differences. It's got a bigger gun, but ultimately tanks are tanks. Work about the same. We have a turret of an M60 right there, and you can actually take a peek inside and see what it looks like inside. Now this turret weighs thousands of pounds, just the top of it. Mm. Who thinks I can lift this barrel? <laughs> the barrels had a stabilizing mechanism. It made the barrel turn maneuver much easier. And so when you're driving along and you're in rough terrain and you're bouncing around, the barrel will move with the bounce so that as you move around, it's always pointing in the same direction. It keeps your aim steady. This is a 1939 Cadillac, one like General Patton had. This is a half track from World War II. This one's set up to be a troop carrier. Some had guns in the back. This is a Congressional Medal of Honor plaque for the Coachella Valley recipients um, that's here below. This is the Vietnam Air Remembrance Wall. This wall over here is the Defenders of Freedom Remembrance Wall. This is what the training area for the tanks looked like. They really didn't use this just for the tanks, but they also used it for full attack mode, where basically the planes would come in and drop all their bombs. The artillery would then shell the area and then the tanks would go in. And what I'm standing on, who knows, this could be some kind of uh, bomb fragments where they might have hit. 
Here's some inventions that Leonardo da Vinci made. This one right here is a 33 barrel organ. It's, it's multiple cannons, 33 cannons that shoot very rapidly like today's machine gun. Here's one of the cannons that he invented. Here is a Scythe's Chariot. And then here is a catapult that he invented. Pretty amazing guy. You also find this at the General Patton Memorial Museum. Hello, welcome back. Hope you had, you enjoyed our little time with the General Patton Memorial Museum. Uh, there was a lot here, everything from World War One, World War Two, Korean War, and Vietnam War. Um, where it's located, it's about two and a half hours east of Los Angeles and they're open basically 9.30 to 4.30 every day. So come on out here, take a look. I just gave you a quick view, but uh, there's things that you can see a lot more. All right, we'll talk to you later, and be sure you see our next adventure on Edwin Travels 2. And if you like this, don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you. Bye-bye.